Well, the Canadian Congress has launched a campaign to help organizations dismantle colonialism in their policies and systems. To talk more about this on a Realities of Racism panel, Honorable Jean Augustine, the first black Canadian woman elected into the House of Commons. Uh, Alex Ahama also joins us, Executive Director of the Canadian Congress on Inclusive Diversity and Workplace Equity. Really great to have you both on the program. Thank, Thank you, so you much. Angie. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Jean. It's been a very long time. I was hoping one day it'll be in person. Fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> yes. Alex, yes. I want to start with you first. Talk to me about this uh, really important initiative that the Canadian Congress has just launched. Yes. Well, you know, for, for far too long, everybody talks about racism and, and rightly so. But we wanted to help people to understand the root cause of it. You cannot talk about racism without understanding colonialism. In fact, colonialism uh, gave birth to racism. And if we really want to dismantle, or if we really want to end systemic racism, then we need to dismantle colonialism. So, and a lot of people, frankly, also don't understand colonialism because uh, many people, frankly, in this country uh, may not have even gone through colonial colonialization. I come from a country that was colonized, and I live in a country of the colonizers because mm. they came here and they colonized the indigenous people. And the indigenous people, as we know, continue to struggle. So we wanted to take people to the depth of the issues that we are faced with today, not just in the workplace, by the way, in the judicial system, mm -hmm. in the educational system, in the financial system, in the communities, in schools, and everywhere. It, and it's so important that you say that, because when we look at that level of education, even when we look at our history books, what my what I may have learned here in Canada, what our kids are learning, there is a lot of that history that is missing, that conversation, that experience, as you talk about, Alex. And Gina, I want to bring you in on this, because this is so <laughs> critical now when we're looking at the current generation and future generations to now inspire them, to give them that empowerment That's within right. their communities to have those conversations and to break those barriers. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so important that this conversation also is taking place in Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. February as Black History Month is really to focus on those issues that's so important for Canadians and for Canadian society to recognize what is missing in our history books, what we have not taught about our indigenous peoples, what we have not explained to our academic in academic circles and other places so that we could fully understand who we are in Canadian society as African Canadians, as indigenous peoples, mm -hmm. uh, and that we take that opportunity not only to educate ourselves, but also to ensure that the young people know Exactly. What things there are in the system. And what would you say, Jean, when you make that comparison? And, and Alex, I'll ask you the same question. Looking at your experience to where we are today, and rightly so, as we mark Black History Month. Well, I am a child of the colonial of colonialism. My education was uh, was in a colonial setting. I knew more about the kings and queens of England, the wars that are fought in Britons, the mountains, uh, and uh, in Australia and uh, and in other Commonwealth places. And uh, so that was the educational structure. It was also it was a Eurocentric. Um, base or Eurocentric uh, world uh, view. And so it's important that when we talk about dismantling, when we talk about racism and we talk about things that are built into our institutions, mm -hmm. that is the way we've always done it. That's the way it has always been. Those things that are built in, mm -hmm. how do we have a clear understanding of those things and how we need to make room in our boardrooms, in our society, in educational structure, and how do we give the affirmation mm -hmm. to the academics and all the people who are writing and researching and uh, museum keepers, and how do we explain all of this so that we could see ourselves as productive members 
of uh, the society. Absolutely. And Alex, I want to get you to weigh in on this before we have to, to wrap up here. I've got uh, about 30 seconds or so left. What would you say? You talked about that experience for you looking to where we are here today and where we need to go. Yeah, I think we are at a point, a turning point in history. Right, the Honorable Jean Augustine passed the motion for Black mm -hmm. History to be recognized uh, back in 1995, and I believe, you know, I went through the Senate with uh, Don uh, Senator Don Oliver involved in it. A lot of people came together and do that. But at this point in time, we should move from the celebration of Black History to strategic action, very actionable items. So, for example, why do we relegate black history to February? Mm -hmm. We have, the black people have enough history for a school curriculum, even for a master's degree, mm -hmm. for a PhD. So we should take actions like that. And, and I tell organizations, instead of uh, saying you are celebrating black history, hire a black person. If there's an opening this month in February, hire a black person, because we know that racism is an economic empowerment issue. Right? So if you want to make a change, donate to a black uh, organization. Donate to the Jean Augustine Foundation uh, Center of, uh, for Young Girls and, uh, and Women. Mm -hmm. Do something. Don't just go there and say, well, oh, we are celebrating black history and it's talk, talk, talk. I think it's time we move from talk to action. That is what I see. Enough of talk. Yes. Time for action. Universities, you can do more than just celebrating black history. Indeed. The as well. They need to consider, you know, uh, recognizing the international decades of people of African descent. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that there are lots of actions to be done. Yes. And I think it's time to move from just celebration to action. Absolutely. And I think you said it right there. It's the action that we need to see and we're not seeing nowhere near enough of it. It is so wonderful to have your voices on this, to have you both, Honorable Jean Augustine, uh, as well as the executive director of the Canadian Congress on Inclusivity and Workplace Equity, Alex Ahama. It is an honor and a pleasure. We will continue this conversation. Thank you.